Salvechik about the Ewa Mishpatim. Rabbi Salvechik writes something here which is so profoundly beautiful and really goes to the essence of what it means to be a, uh, a Jew in, um, and his really approach to our faith. He was a Talmudist. And this is what he writes. It says, I'm taking this from the, the, the Torah Mesorah Tarav. He writes as follows. This comes from an address he gave in Yeshiva University in 1981. So he was already older and, and he was not as strong at that point, but this is what he said. Following the giving of the Ten Commandments, the Torah should have proceeded immediately with chapter 24, which comes at the end of our portion, the end of Parashas Mishpatim, in which Hashem tells Moshe to seal the covenant with the people. And that should be followed by the construction of the Mishkan. In the past, you know, we're basically answering Bruce's question now. Like, why is, it, why, why is this so important? You know, his question actually is, are the other laws less important? But Rabbi Salvechik is focusing on why are these so important? So why is this here even before the commandment to, to seal the, the construction of the Mishkan, which is Teruma and Tetzaveh, and this was, a, this was a required step towards the fulfillment of the promise. When you take the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So that encompasses the revelation at Sinai, the construction of Mishkan. And then there's a return to the revelation uh, with the episode of the golden calf. So Rabbi Salvechik points out that Mishpatim represents a dramatic departure. Instead of continuing with the revelation, there's an interruption. Parshas Mishpatim, with its many detailed laws of Nazikin, seems to depart from the context. I just say, interrupt Rabbi Salvechik to say, that's why Rashi has to make the point that this was also taught at Sinai. But I guess Rabbi Salvechik says, we don't need to adopt, we don't need to adopt Rashi's reading to make a different point. This is what he says. Apparently, Parshas Mishpatim, this is what he says, is an interpretation of the Ten Commandments. Why is Mishpatim coming now, says Rabbi Salvechik? Because it's an interpretation of the Ten Commandments. Without Parshas Mishpatim, there can be no kingdom of priests and a holy nation. It says in Parshas Yisro, collect, receive the Ten Commandments so that you can be a Mamlechet Kohanim the Goy Kadosh, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Without Mishpatim, without these civil laws, there can be no kingdom of priests. Almost all the fundamental principles, principles of the mitzvot may be found here. So this is what this is what Rabbi Salvechik writes. He says, Why should the Torah address questions of financial commitments? Why should the Torah care about the situation of a paid or an unpaid watchman? I mean, why does the Torah basically have to give us real estate law? The, or acquisitions, contract law, presumptions of ownership, transfer of promissory notes. These, these, these monetary issues would seem to be out of place in a moral code. I, I can see some of the people here who are attorneys, they're just feeling like so happy here all of a sudden. It's like they've been waiting for this passage here whole life to hear Rabbi Salvechik what he's saying. He says, these, the conclusion then, in, then is that civil laws carry religious significance. Let me repeat that. The civil laws carry religious significance. Destructions of property and trespass, trespassing are not merely violations of civil law, but moral transgressions. That's what Rabbi Salavechik says. If one studies the laws of the service on Yom Kippur or the chauffeur on Rosh Hashanah, that's a fulfillment of studying the matter of the day. But the study of Cheska Sabatim, that's the law concerning squatters' rights, or two people who seize the garment at the same time, Shnaim Olsen Metalis, on these holy days is no less exalting. You're saying, what are you going to be doing on Yom Kippur? This Yom Kippur, I'm going to be studying squatters' rights. That's the most spiritual thing you could do, says Rabbi Soloveitchik even though it's not about the essence of that day, it fulfills the mitzvah. Parshish Mishpatim was introduced at this particular point to demonstrate that these civil laws are in fact religious laws. The last Mishnah in Baba Basra states that if one wishes to become a scholar, he needs to study the civil monetary laws. The study of these topics sharpens the mind 
allows the development of precision and depth. The study of Nazikin, these civil laws, inspires the one who studies. There's a special capacity which the Almighty implanted in these laws that inspires at both the emotional and the intellectual level. The best scholarship of all the rabbis was in the area of Jewish civil law, in Nazikin. So that is what Rabbi Salvechik says, and he says, basically, this is the way to exalt ourselves, to inspire ourselves, is to study is to study these laws of the civil laws, that to be a, a good Jew means to know the, the civil code of, of Jewish law. Let me just pause for a second, see if anybody has any questions. If you don't, we'll go on.